for Neo from the Matrix. The neophyte is that he shall be honorable and upright in his dealings. Number four, the cradle of the symbolism used in all masonry is placed by many of the best authorities in that country, which they believe was first inhabited, the plateau of Tartary. Tartary, the empire of Tartaria, is something that we are going to get into much much later, but actually sooner than later. And this is going to be a big one. This is where the ten tribes, the lost ten tribes of Israel, are housed. And from there, transmitted to this generation by the sages of India, Persia, Ethiopia, and Egypt. We are not indebted to either ancient Egypt for either religion or masonry but to America. It is fact that at Memphis, Egypt, in the pyramids, under the guidance of the kings and the mystic rites of masonry were worked many thousands of years ago, but at that time Egypt and the continent of America were one and the same. Number six, in America, rediscovered in the 15th century and repopulated in the 17th. Do you see that? Rediscovered after Pangaea and the catastrophe that you read about in the book of Ezekiel in the 15th century and repopulated in the 17th. That means everything prior to these centuries is made up history. The remnant, those who are controlling governments today, took the history and tried to write themselves in to make it seem like they've always been there. There's a lot we are going to uncover in future videos. Repopulated in the 17th was recovered Egypt and the promised land or the land of the constellation of the eagle and we know America is represented by the eagle with the flag this can go deep very deep but I just wanted to break down North America is the promised land and they are keeping that from you so let's get into a little geography Come with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, verses 1 through 5. I'm going to be reading from the Geneva Bible of 1560. So it says here, Then Moses went from the plain of Moab onto Mount Nebo, onto the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho, and the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan and all Nephtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh and all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea and the south and the plain of the valley of Jericho the cities of palm trees unto Zoar and the Lord said unto him this is the land which I swore unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over thither. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley of the land of Moab over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth his burial unto this day. Okay, so we see here that Moses went to the plains of Moab unto Mount Nebo. Now we're talking about the land of Judah or Uda. In other words, that is the country of Utah. Okay, let's see if we can find these locations. 
here in our map system. Okay, so first we're going to go from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, from Mount Nebo to the tops of Mount Pisgah, and from there we'll go over to the area of Jericho. So let's start from our map system here. We're going to go from Moab, Utah, to Mount Nebo, Utah. We're going to use the walking feature. And you can actually walk it. This is about 284 miles total from Moab to Mount Nebo. And look at this, Nephi. Nephi, that is the word that's derived from Nephtali, one of the tribes of Israel. So now we're going to go from Mount Nebo, Utah, to Mount Pisgah, Utah. So from Mount Nebo, near Nephi, we go all the way across to Mount Pisgah, to the right of the Great Salt Lake, just right here. And by the way, Ogden, Utah is a major area for the Internal Revenue Service. And so now we go from Mount Pisgah over to Jericho. It all connects. It all connects. It is all here within walking distance so that if Moses was standing at the top of the mountain, he could see these areas. They are in distance. He could see them if he stood at the top of this mountain. So when we talk about these areas being in another continent, the African continent or the Asia areas, all of that comes from reconstructed history. Everything was done here and moved there upon Pangaea. As Morpheus said in the Matrix, we do not know when we are and we do not know where we are. They have hidden all of the geographical books and history. So we have to uncover this information by getting into the right libraries. And even if we have to speak a certain language to have access to get to those libraries, then that's what we're going to do. And believe me, that is real. Certain congressional libraries do not allow you into specific sections of the library unless you speak a certain language, an ancient language. Ask me how I know. Now let's go ahead and go back to the Geneva Bible and we're going to go to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 11 verses 15. If you look here, it says the Lord also shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea and with his mighty wind shall lift up his hand over the river and shall smite him in his seven streams and cause men to walk therein with shoes. In other words, dry shod. So this great river that God is speaking of, that he will strike with his hand and split it into seven streams is the great Nile River. Now we all know that the great Nile River is located in Africa, right? Well, let's look at some information with the Nile. The Nile is, according to Wikipedia, the Nile is a major north flowing river in northeastern Africa. It flows into the Mediterranean Sea, the longest river in Africa. It has historically been considered the longest river in the world. 
though this has been contested by research suggesting that the Amazon River is slightly longer. The Nile is among the smallest of the major world rivers by measure of cubic meters flowing annually. Let's drop down here. The Nile has two major tributaries. The White Nile, which begins at Jinja, Lake Victoria, and the Blue Nile. The White Nile is traditionally considered to be the Headwaters stream. However, the Blue Nile is the source of most of the water of Nile downstream, containing 80% of the water and soot. If we click on this map here, we can see that this entire thing is the Nile River, spawning from the Mediterranean Sea all the way down into Lake Victoria. So, if you look at the two tributaries we talked about, it's the Blue Nile spawning off here and the White Nile, smaller but spawning off here. Now, what is the major river in North America? That would be the Mississippi River. Capital M I cricket letter cricket letter I cricket letter cricket letter I P P I. You remember saying that growing up to remember how to spell that word? The Mississippi River system. Now, let's go back to the word. It says in verse 15 that God will take his hand with a mighty wind and lift his hand over the river and shall smite him into seven streams. Okay? Look at this map here. This is the Mississippi River going into the Gulf. Let's count how many streams spawns from this. Missouri, one. Arkansas, two. Red, three. Archafalaya, four. Tennessee, five. Ohio, six. Illinois, seven. Is that a coincidence? I do not think so. This is the Nile River. They're hiding the information. Now let's. Okay, next. Pyramids in America. Map of ancient pyramid civilizations and prehistoric communities. All right, now if you look at this map, it is a map of modern day America. And look at all the pyramids in America. Just look at it. I'm going to get into it later. How many exactly? But just look, it damn near covers the whole state and definitely the east of the Mississippi, as you can see. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going step by step. Keep up with me. Side note, I just want to add this in. Known to America as the cradle of American civilization. Now look what we have here. Old Testament map of ancient America. As you see on the left, the Great Sea, Lebanon, Israel, Jerusalem, the Red Sea, Egyptian Sea, Asaharia, Babylon, Mesopotamia, all these ancient biblical territories. Isis Temple of the Grand Canyon. Isis Temple curved wall at 90 degree angle. So you guys know of Isis the Isis Temple, and you damn sure know about the Grand Canyon. Well, where is the Grand Canyon? Right here in the Americas, where you are, where I am, and roughly 300 plus million people. Now they tell you Isis is a temple in the pyramids of Giza in Africa. Well, right here in your face, the Grand Canyon and the Isis Temple. And I'm about to get into more about the Grand Canyon. All right. Now let's go to Google. Look what I typed in the search engine. How many pyramids in Africa? And let's see what it says. More than 200 pyramids. Okay. More than 200. Now watch this. Now we're right back on Google. Look at the search engine. How many pyramids in America? And look what it says. Nearly 2 
thousand different pyramids can be found in America. Now, 2,000 sounds like it's way more than 200, as in Africa, right? I know I'm right. But the point I'm trying to make is, why is it more pyramids in America than it is in Africa? Africa's supposed to be the sacred biblical ground, the homeland, et cetera, et cetera, right? Somebody's lying to us. This guy, uh... I've been following his page for like over a year. The show that I was on, I remember I mentioned to you guys about uh, real quick about Califia and yeah. the Queen of California. Right. And I was saying there's not a lot of people. This guy actually probably has the best video still you can find on YouTube. It's like probably three, four hours long. Um, he, he's got resources. He's reading from books. This isn't just his theories. He's coming with straight from books and stuff. So it's not really so much to argue. He's going to bring up some interesting points and facts, and uh, he's going to paint the, maybe a different picture than we all heard. Hey. So, uh, you know, I'm excited to get out of the way. I, I love this guy's research, and, uh, you know, let's just be uh, about understanding, and, and let's try not to debate tonight. Let's just try to understand. No doubt. And that's all. Good looking, brother. Hey, listen. Why you look at me like that? All right, Why? so coming to the stage, coming to the stage. Yeah, how you pronounce it? I want to say it right, man, because when you get when you get, when you bring on cast, I Columbus, say everything wrong. <laughs> um, how you pronounce his name? Say it one more time. Yeah, it's a uh, Cudi Mayo. Oh, Cudi Mayo. Cudi Mayo. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, first of all, you know, I just want to say, you know, shout out to you for having me on. You know, mm. thanks to everybody that's tuning in. You know, it, you know. Um, I just want to say, you know, I, I can hold myself down. You know, I don't need nobody, you know, because hey. uh, I'm, I'm not I'm coming with respect. You know, I'm coming with sources and I'm coming with uh, scholarly information that anybody can verify. Right. So, yeah, if people don't like it, it's OK. We have we're humans. We have emotions. That happens. We all have to empty our cup eventually, though. And, um, you know, the rabbit hole is deeper than we actually thought, like a lot deeper. It wasn't so black and white, mm. you know, and that's uh so I just wanted to say, you know, you know, if anybody wants to, um, any, I usually don't do this. I, I don't just talk and do not and show a source. I'm all my videos. I'm showing a source of what I'm saying, and I'm showing academic stuff, not somebody's website or a Facebook page or Wikipedia only. So we right. get into the actual primary sources. Okay. We get into the firsthand account census. We get into genealogy, oral history, anthropology, ethnology, mm. archaeology. Mm. We all right. cover it all. You okay. Know? My my first some some people in the chat they they said they know you. Even the movie say, joints, yo. Don't forget you got uh photography too with the Black Panther joint in the back. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, just talking about that, I mean. Honestly, how many of you guys on the pan? I mean, so I, you might know. I don't know. I'm not gonna say you don't know. But Wakanda is a Native American word. Did you yeah, guys I know, know that. that? I know that. I'm, okay. I'm very, very familiar with that. Go ahead. Okay. So I got a great video I did on that a couple not, years you know, back. That's not no talking over. Let the brother speak. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's very well. Okay. Known. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't. I, that's why I want to make sure. You know, I'm not gonna say that. You, you might know it. So, what? What the thing is? So if we know that, why do we keep putting it over there? Mm. The other over side there? of the, over where? What why, mean? on the other he hemisphere, like why do we why did we base it over there and then we didn't we didn't correct? I don't the, know. You the, tell the, us. You know, I don't Hollywood. Know. Maybe, maybe you said why do we base it in <laughs> Africa? Maybe, That's what you're saying. Maybe you Yo, we gotta. We, yeah, no, we're not exactly. Going to do that today we gotta we gotta yeah, we gotta listen. Yeah. We gotta listen. Tell yeah. us why they. Yeah, put no, it over there. That's what I mean. Before y'all take out that, I got you. All right, good. Good. Yeah. So what kind of means supernatural? It's like the great spirit. You know, that's almost like a, a superhero. Actually, when you actually look at the word Wakanda, how Native Americans seen it or American Indians, it actually becomes like a superhero. You know, where did Marvel and all these people really get their ideas from? You know, is it all just from a specific place just because they said so? You know, we just believed it just because it just sounded cool and it just made sense to us, you know, because that's where we're all from, right? So, you know, we had Jaguar warriors, you know, we actually dressed up as jaguars, right? Mm -hmm. A panther is just a big cat. There is no species panther. A panther means a big cat. Black panthers exist in America and in Africa through the jaguars and through the leopards. The 
coding, the melanin coat, the black is dominant amongst jaguars. It's recessive on the leopards. We have proven mammals, carnivores, cats originated in America. All right, so there's a lot, you know, when you go check out the video, there's a whole bunch of correlation when we talk about Amazonian women and warriors and stuff. We, we have the primary sources telling us who really, where they really were, you know, and where they were finding them before the 1600s. You know, it's funny because Before me coming from the Jesuit about, angle, and things like that. Me, me coming from the Jesuit angle, I've always like the fact that whatever they push, I feel like it can't be the truth because I know they're a liar. And the the Jesuits are actually the people that are behind pushing such things as roots and uh, slavery coming out of Africa, and actually behind the big portion of the outer Africa movement is actually the the Catholic Church who's put over $100 million into uh, giving out things for reparations and all types of things for slavery. Um, it seems like they're the ones pushing the agenda and trying to say that we all come from there. So that's how, like, I was already open-minded to this. And then all of a sudden I found uh, his channel and uh, the, the evidence is, is kind of overwhelming. And, okay, and that's so why I want to try to just be quiet. <laughs> All right. Before I let the... Yeah, you got, you got a question. <laughs> but hold on. So what are you saying that... Um, you saying you found out what information about... Um, are you saying that everybody didn't come from Africa and they were already here? Or are you saying that there were... You know, like, what are you saying? Are you asking me? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, when, we, when I first started my channel, you know, uh, we were realizing that there was already so-called black people over here, what you consider black, right, or Negro, um, you know, whatever anybody, yeah. you know, you know, considers that to be. Yeah. We had all phenotypes here. We had every type of hair. We had every shade of copper complexion from the lightest to the darkest copper. That's okay. why in 1828, the American uh, uh, Webster's Dictionary, it tells you for the word American, it means the copper colored Aboriginal tribes that were here and later on applied to the descendants of Europeans, mm. right? Copper colored comes in many shades, not just light, not just dark, all right? And um, there's many references, primary sources of what the colonists and settlers, conquistadors were seeing when they got here, they wrote it down. You know, this is stuff that was left out of the, intentionally out of the school books, all right? Straight up, they're describing them as Negro, like even calling them Negroes, mm. you know? so. You know, this is the stuff I kind of show. Again, it's not what I believe. It's stuff I can verify and show you. And uh, yeah, it's been like four years. It's been a great journey. Okay. We've been learning a lot. And okay. at first, you know, we didn't see no slave ships. And we were like, okay, so if, if, if there was already um, so-called black people here, mm. and we're not really finding the evidence of a trans, like a, from that area, then they all have to have been here. And that's what, that was our, you know, we were all like, okay, maybe it's, but then we realized that, it's not really like that. The lie is deeper than we think. And when we're talking about the original settlers and colonists and conquistadors, we're talking about sort of far Jewish, Moorish people, Huguenots, Protestants, these were all people of color. We always thought these were all white people, mm. right? So most African-Americans have two major genealogies, which is American Indians and the black Europeans. And just because they were black in Europe doesn't necessarily mean they were all from Africa either. All right, mm -hmm. so we have ample evidence and primary sources and anthropology to prove this. I've shown it. These are all the books they've kept from us. And they can't mm -hmm. do it anymore. And if you into truth, you dig for that stuff and you find it. But if you're stuck on one thing that we all from here and we just we just we're not even looking for it. You know, but we got to listen more to grandma. Grandma was a, more right than, than we think. And you have these books on uh, standby, right? Ar Archive.org. Anybody can go to archive.org right now all right, you and uh, find all, most of these books. They're scanned. Uh, Obama made all the libraries and universities scan all the old books. They're available for everybody. But again, we got to know what we're looking for. You got to know the specific source. So you got to look at the footnotes when you're reading things and look for that source. See if it exists. See if it really says that. And what else in that 600 page does it say? Because they're only giving you one sentence in a 600 page book. I always say that, man. It's, it's, I always said that. When you're reading, 
you got to look deeper into it. You just can't take it on face value. You have to look deeper and you have to add stuff up, right? You don't advise. Okay, you we got to move. Empty your Where, where's Vinny at? You got to empty your cup. Out, left. He oh, left okay. Vinny out. He like, man, this dude <laughs> tripping. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move the subject. Nah, that's All right. not what Benny's saying. Thank you, George. And now, Killer brother. Priest, hey, listen, yeah. Killer Priest knows what Benny's gonna say. He's not saying I'm tripping. Trust me, man. You ain't nobody clowning nobody, man. We gonna check you, you ain't it's just you, you tripping? That's you tripping of of, <laughs> of, of opinions, information man. and words? You getting an cool. emotional of words and stuff? You 